Today, during episode 102 of Look What Jess Found, Jess found this 1983 penny, which it was one of the last cents that we looked through today. And um, there wasn't, I mean, there was some, we had some interesting stuff in the, it was, it's definitely a worthwhile video to check out. If you click the link below or at the end of the video, <laughs> or if you type in EP 102 into the search bar for our channel, you'll see the, you can find the, the episode that I'm talking about. And so I pick up the penny, right? And I'm like, okay. You know, no big deal. And I'm looking at it, and I see the little those little those little lines up here, and I'm like, oh, I wonder what that could be. You know, I mean, you know, 99 out of 100 times, it's just damage. But then I zoomed in, and it became apparent that those are. The marks from another penny or a die clash where the die has struck a penny that flipped and it put the image on the edge of another penny. Now, I am going to, that's why I'm making this special video. I'm going to look at, it's called the Glossary of Ever-Variety Terms. And we're going to look at Die Clash. So I can read to you the definition of what a die clash is, according to uh, ConeCOnline.org, cone which I'm probably saying wrong. Huh, I just saw something interesting, Col a collar clash. If I see if I see something I don't recognize, I take a I take a moment out to read it. Occasionally, the die shifts slightly out of position. And instead of fully striking a planchet, it partially strikes the collar. As with a die clash, the design of the collar or the smooth or read it is transferred to the die. This in turn is transferred to the coin struck by the die. Most often, only the read it collar clashed coins are of collector interest. But again, only if there's a significant design transfer. Oh, okay. That's pretty funny because I just found a a penny that I I thought I was calling it a broken collar, and this one's calling it a collar clash. So just just because I read that, I'll I'll just show you the uh, what I found on a different. And this is also from episode um, one hundred two. And you can see it's this was this was the last copper, and this one, believe it or not, was the last uh, zinc. <laughs> so it was it was a pretty interesting episode. But again, we're looking for die clash. So maybe that one I just showed you is a, is a collar clash. Maybe not. But we're looking for die clash right now. Okay. Die clash. Okay. Now this one, this one's talking about for the wheat scent. Now, does it really matter if it's for the wheat scent or it's not for the wheat scent? And then th this one shows the jail. I found I found two um, jail jailbreak die clashes. I think you can type that also into the the search bar and you can find them. Those were pretty cool and interesting. One was really good. The other one was kind of light. Okay, it says for the wheat scent. So I don't, I don't understand what the difference is or why the person's making this. Uh... Okay, because they, they're talking specifically about 
the prisoner scent. I called it the jail scent before. All right, for the we scent, look under Lincoln's chin for an upside down T of scent on the obverse and in between. It's really not giving us a very good definition, though. All right, so let's. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to. Um, I'm surprised that that I guess I guess well that's just the way that that channel is I guess. Die clash. All right, here we go. Errorreference.com. So here's another one. And they are talking about the 19. Again, they have the jail, the jail scent, the prison scent. I, I don't know what what their um, infatuation is with this scent and what it has to do with all the other die clashes. And anyway, it is what it is. I'm going to read it. This mishap occurs when opposing dies collide. Opposing dies collide with each other when a planchet fails to feed. Okay. Into the striking chamber. Most complete planchet misfeeds don't result in die and clash dies because dies normally don't touch each other in the absence of a planchet. Okay. The die operate with a safety margin that can be referred to as a minimum die clearance or minimum die distance, which has to be like, like super thin, obviously, if it has to be thinner than a planchet. These terms refer to the closest approach the dies make to each other in the absence of a planchet. In order for the dies to clash, the dies must have fallen out of adjustment so that their minimum clearance is zero or less than zero. So, and again, uh, the coming together of the upper and lower dies with the punch between them, resulting in a partial overlay of design. Okay, so that's that's what it says here in Google. The coming together of the upper and lower dies without a planchet between them during the striking of a coin, resulting in a partial overlay of design. All right. I, I don't, I don't, and. So again, this is this is what makes um, understanding errors so difficult and complicated, uh, unless unless they are very specific, right? Like the, for example, the de the, the the jail. Uh, sent because it's it's the it literally is the reverse image, right? Now, so okay, so this would not be a die clash then, okay? <laughs> okay, so then this would be it would be a, a a strike through of was from an of another of another coin, okay. And I'm going to leave, I'm not going to edit this, strike through error resulting from other coin. Okay, so not a die clash. So I'm glad, I'm glad we got that out of the way. And if you waited here for 10 minutes and you were saying, that's not a die clash, that's not a die clash, that's... A strike through. Okay. Okay. All right. Fine. Fine. All right. I'm glad you. I'm glad you. You realized that before me. You did. Very good. Very good. So it's a strike through. A strike through coin is made when another object comes between a blank and a die at the time of the strike. Okay. The object's outline is pressed into the blank surface. Common examples include hard objects such as staples, metal shavings, and, and other coins. And other coins. Okay, so
I'm going to, I'm going to turn this around for a second. So that is a very good example of the process that we go through when we're trying to understand an error on a coin. Some people know, for example, if that was a, most strike throughs that I found are from foreign objects, like, uh, and you could tell they have, they have very specific shapes, almost like if they're punched, but you could tell they're not punched because they're kind of random looking. There'll be a square and look, a staple, um, some random stuff, right? That got in between the planchet and the die. What confused me about this one was the fact that it was it's the image of another of a part of a coin. And that confused me. And that made me think of actually it's funny that I may I criticize why they keep showing the prison scent, which is the back of the um of the penny with the Lincoln Memorial. But that is actually what was in my head making me say die clash was because it's the image of of a penny on the wrong side of the penny and that confused me and that's how easy it is for me to get confused maybe maybe you don't but if you don't know what type of error it is that's what you have to go through you have to click you have to type in what it looks like obviously you could read the whole it's pretty long if you try and read one of those websites with the full glossary of terms it could take you a little while probably a, a few hours which is not a bad thing to do but you know i'm making a video right now and i really thought it was a die clash and it wasn't so it's a strike through from another coin how cool is that What's it worth? I know that's the next the next question I get asked. Now that we know it's a strike through. I always use eBay. Penny strike through. Penny strike through. Hmm. You got it. You have to go to You have to go to sales to sold. All right. There's not there's not many. There are the 259 that have sold in the past. I remember it's funny, I remember a couple of these. I remember a couple of these. Wow. They're not they're not cheap. They're not cheap. I'm not saying you can't snipe one here or there. They start off with about five dollars and the better ones are over thirty. There's a wa there's a waffle one. I remember when that waffle one I, I put a bid on it. I didn't I didn't get it. You know, it went for forty dollars plus shipping plus tax. You know, fifty dollar. It went for fifty bucks, and you know, I just wasn't. I didn't. I didn't bid that high. Is it worth it? Probably. It's probably worth a hundred. I mean, it's very unique. Hey, you want to see it? I'll show you. So you can see the prices here. That's the. I put a bid on that one. I didn't get it, but I thought that was absolutely beautiful. I actually spoke about this design in a couple of my videos but you can see the sold for and you know so, so something like this is selling for 50 bucks in auction in auction in this economy that's a really beautiful um strike through 
So let's look at this one again. Now that we know what we're looking at, right? So another penny And you know what? I'm, su I'm surprised it's not someplace else also, you know? I wonder if it was... I bet you it was... It, it, let me find another, another penny. Like, I'm wondering how come it's not all over the place, you know what I'm saying? It's just on the edge there. And what I'm thinking is... Here are the words, right? Uh, it's not one of these. Let me... Oh, whatever. I'll, I'll just do this. It's probably like just like that. And you would think you would see. Let me look at this under the uh, loop again. Hmm. I don't see any other hits except for that one in that one quarter above america just there that's the only place i see it well this was a very long exercise in determining what type of error that is and you can see the u and the N, I guess that I guess that's the it's from United. I guess this part of the penny from another penny fell over there. If you know, you can see it, that's such a great picture right there. If you know um, Yeah, I think that's United. Pretty crazy. It is beautiful though. Um yeah, I would say 20, 30 bucks for this. Definitely. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. That's a wide AM. The 1983 has a wide AM, I guess. That would have been crazy if 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 if, if, if that was also a uh, an error, like a wide AM instead of like a, a closed AM. Anyway, please click like and subscribe. It really helps the video out, uh, the YouTube algorithm, and all that stuff. And um, I'll see you on the next one.